Uh, 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 oh, uh, hi everybody. How you doing? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just um, I'm just resting my eyes. Just resting my eyes. Yeah, I um, I sleep down here in my studio at my desk with my webcam turned on, with the microphone ready to go, just in case I wake up in the middle of the night and have to make a spontaneous YouTube video. You know, that's just how this that's how this works, right? Okay. Hey everyone, Teching and Barry back again. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video about Aokiji. Uh, last chapter, chapter 1087, had some great moments with him. Uh, oddly enough, considering we're dealing with Garp a lot right now, you know, go Garp, yeah! But uh, we're actually getting a lot more from Aokiji's backstory than Garp's. Uh, also very unique in the fact that um, out of all of the admirals, the one that we're finding out the most about right now is Kuzan who's not even an admiral anymore, who left the Marines. So, for that reason, I wanted to ask, just like out of the gate, um, who here considers uh, Aokiji as their favorite admiral? Like, out of all the admirals in the story, and you know what? I'll even include, like, Sengoku in that category as well. Everybody, admiral or fleet admiral, uh, who uh, considers Aokiji or Kuzan as their favorite. And it would make sense if a lot of people did, because we don't really know a lot about the others' backstories. Um, Fujitora, like, a little bit. I feel like Oda's gonna do something with Fujitora and Aramaki's backstories, like, to find out, like, more about them, because uh, they joined later. But with the other admirals, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a little bit of a backstory to see how Sakazuki turned out. I Honestly, like, if, the, if Oda was going to keep any admiral, like, a mystery of just, like... I'm not going to explain how this person ended up the way they did. I would rather it be Kizaru. <laughs> just just straight up. Like, I'm never going to explain Kizaru. He just is, okay? Uh, oh, before we get into it, though, I did want to announce that I will be at TechoCon this weekend coming up. Uh, it is uh, the, the con is going from... Thursday, July 20th, and it's ending the 23rd. I will be there on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? And I am doing a panel this year. However, the scheduling of the panel was a little messed up. It was like one date, and then it changed to another, and I had to like, you know, uh, email them and get that all situated. My panel will be at 8.30 p.m., on Friday the 21st. Okay, so Friday the 21st, 8.30 p.m. at TechoCon in Pittsburgh at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. Uh, getting into the video now. All right, so Aokiji right now is presented with a choice, okay? A few choices, actually. Um, but he's honestly gone through this journey of self-discovery more so than any other admiral. Uh, with a lot of the admirals, with once again the exception being Kizaru, you kind of feel like they're at this position in the Marines, and they're just kind of go along with it. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm expected to do, so this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing. Like, for example, I don't think Sakazuki is ever going to have a moment in this story where he kind of, like, realizes that what he's doing is, is a little bit too extreme, is a little bit wrong, like, the, the wrong direction of justice, and he decides to change his ways. Um, I, I don't see Sakazuki doing that. I could see Sakazuki, you know, getting on to the fact that the world government is insanely corrupted, and then the Gorosei and Eam and everything like that. Like, if Sakazuki ever found out about the existence of Eam, that's a whole other story. But Sakazuki's still going to be Sakazuki, right? Uh, Fujitora and Aram Aramaki. Aramaki definitely is 100% on board with this because he's an Akainu fanboy. Now with Fujitora, this is rather interesting because he just joined the Marines. He was already a very moral individual. So he just joined and is beginning to see the corruption of the Marines. Fujitora is not the one that's going to change his outlook on justice. His outlook on justice is going to change the Marines, in my opinion. Or at least he's going to try to change the Marines. So Fujitora is staying true to his, uh, his creed, his justice. That hasn't changed. But Aokiji, uh, he left, and so now he had this moment of, like, depression for a little while, where uh, a year after the battle at Punk Hazard, you know, he lost his leg, and he was just kind of bumming around the New World, and just hanging out at bars and pubs, until eventually he ran into Blackbeard's crew. And they kind of got along, you know, they were hanging out and everything like that, because once again, remember, since Aokiji is no longer part of the Marines, um, what reason would Aokiji have to hate Blackbeard for? You know, because us as the fans, of course, we loved Ace and Whitebeard and everybody, and, and Blackbeard, you know, killed them, essentially. He killed Whitebeard straight up at Marineford, and it was because of Blackbeard's actions that Ace was captured and ended up getting executed. Like, if Blackbeard never captured Ace, then he wouldn't have been executed at Marineford by Akainu, right? So we don't like Blackbeard for those reasons, and Luffy certainly doesn't like Blackbeard for those reasons, but why would Kuzan hate him, you know, necessarily? Like, oh, you murdered Whitebeard at Marineford and took his devil fruit. 
What the hell does Kuzon care? He spent his whole life, you know, as a Marine fighting against the Pirates, which Whitebeard and Ace were, okay? Um, you know, at the end of the day, maybe you could say that, like, Kuzon respected Whitebeard a little bit, you know, kind of like an honor amongst the Pirates as the idea of, like, all right, he's a Pirate, but he does have a code of conduct, so to speak. Um, but at the end of the day, he was a Pirate. Ace was too. So Kuzon's, Kuzon doesn't really hold a grudge against Blackbeard. So they were just kind of hanging out, pounding back some brewskis, and just talking about life and... And just like, okay, how did the fight with Akainu go? And Aokiji was kind of telling him his war stories, and Blackbeard and everybody were like, oh my god, that's freaking crazy. What did that SOB Akainu say after that? And then, Ak and then Aokiji is just like, all right, well, listen to this. And everyone's laughing and having a good time. And um, it, it kind of gets a little tense at a certain point when Lafitte kind of leans over to teach and kind of whispers in his ear. He's like, hey, Captain, this guy's got a Logia. He's got the freaking ice ice fruit. I mean, that's a really powerful one. Maybe we should, uh, you know, and uh, take it. And then, of course, you know, Kuzan's not an idiot. He overhears that, and he's like, oh, well, I knew you guys were hunting devil fruits, so bring it on. And Blackbeard's like, nah, 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 just, just shut up, Lafitte, be quiet. <laughs> it's just like, look, just ignore my, ignore my mime. He's, he's an idiot. Um, you know, we're here just, you know, just to invite you to the crew. You know, join our crew, Aokiji. I think you'd be good here. And, uh, you know, the, at the end of the day, we're, you know, you subscribe to the world government's sense of justice for most of your life. Well, I subscribe to a type of justice, too. You know, this is Blackbeard saying this. I mean, in, in a certain respect, you know, everybody has their own sense of justice. And, and keep a, put a pin in that, because we're going to get back to that later in the video. Everybody's individual sense of justice. Not just Marines, but everybody. Uh, pirates have their own sense of justice. Revolutionaries have their own sense of justice. Regular civilians in the One Piece world each have their own individual sense of justice and what it really means, okay? And so Blackbeard's kind of telling him, he's just like, look, we're just uh, getting together. We have our goals, and that's why we're a uniform crew to um, have our individual goals be realized you know it's easier to do this in a group rather than separately so that's why my crew came together and that's what we're doing and and you're out there in the world and um, you finally have a unique opportunity Kuzon for the first time in your life because remember Kuzon was a member of the Marines ever since he was like like 19 years old if you go by film Z if that's canon then uh, yeah and so it's just like dude you've been a Marine for like 30 plus years why don't you you know come over to our side and, and you know finally live for yourself for a change, you know? Uh, Blackbeard's crew does have rules and everything, but it's a lot more malleable than working for the Marines. Being an admiral, especially, where you're directly under the thumb of the Tenerubito, it's like, hey, look, join my crew, and then you'll get to do what you want to do. You'll finally get to be your own person. How does that sound? Say ha ha ha! And Aokiji joins, okay? Now, we have uh, flash forward a little bit to the fight at Hachinosu right now and the choice that Aokiji has to make. And I'm not talking about the choice between, like, killing Garp. Uh, we'll get to that, but that's not the major choice that Aokiji has to make right now, because there's something even more uh, pressing on the table. So, last chapter, Aokiji and Garp had their big clash, punched each other in the face, they both got sent flying away. We did not see Aokiji's, uh, like, him get back up after that. Uh, I erroneously stated that he went flying off into the distance. I thought, um, maybe, uh, Avalo Pizarro was gonna use his giant island hand to, like, pick him up out of the sky. If you look at the panel, he clearly was, like, skidding across the ground. You know, he, like, hit the ground and got sent flying away, just like Garp. Garp got sent back, too, the same way, except we saw what happened to him. He was lying on the ground after, and he's like, oh, don't worry, Kobe, justice will prevail. So, we didn't see Aokiji get back up, but I'm sure he's fine. I mean, maybe not fine, he got punched in the jaw by Garp, so he'll get back up, maybe he'll, like, like spit out a tooth or something, but he'll be like, oh, man, I have to replace that tooth with an ice molar, <laughs> you know, something like that. But, Avalo Pizarro, that's the pressing issue right now, because in the, at the end of the last chapter, after doing nothing the entire chapter, pretty much, except of just, like, watching the whole fight unfold as the giant mountain man, um, as the island island fruit user, he raises up his giant fists, and he's about to crush the evacuation ship. He's about to crush uh, Garp's marine vessel. 
and Kobe specifically had a moment where he was like, wait, giant island man, you can't do it. There's innocent civilians on that ship. Okay, so it's not just Marines. It's not just Kujaku and Hibari and Bogart. Bogart was on the ship too. Oh, come on, Bogart. I want to see Bogart do something so badass. I want to see Bogart just jump up in the air and slice off the hand of Avala Pizarro. And then maybe like another hand. It's like, it's like a Madara moment from Naruto. Avala Pizarro is like, ah, you cut off my hand, Bogart. Mm, you are truly a worthy adversary, but how are you going to handle the other four arms? And then, whoa, and then Bogart is like, I don't know if I could cut that many, okay? So, this is the choice Aokiji's got to make, because this is, like, exactly what happened at Ohara, okay? Uh, where at Ohara, you had an evacuation ship leaving the island as it was about to be Buster called, and that evacuation ship was bombarded with cannon fire and sank under the orders of Vice Admiral Sakazuki, who would be Akainu, okay? And so, after that event, after, you know, Akainu destroyed that ship, you had uh, Kuzan helping Robin get away, and uh, I guess helping Saul not die, because he froze Saul but didn't kill him. And so, Kuzan got Robin to safety and like, hey, look... This is what I'm going to do for you. I'll, I'll make an ice path, and here's a boat. Sail that direction. You'll eventually come to another island. That's the best I can do for you. Um, if we ever see each other again, I'm going to have to bring you in. But, you know, uh, he was talking about Akainu and just being like, absolute justice is a pretty scary thing. You know, he's, he's a, he could become a maniac if he keeps going down that path. And this was also a, a landmark moment for uh, Kuzan for changing his sense of justice. He has changed from blazing justice to lazy justice. And uh, by the way, I don't think he subscribes to lazy justice anymore either. I think he did that when he was still an admiral. Now he subscribes to a completely different kind of justice. What kind of justice does he subscribe to? Kuzan's justice. That's what he subscribes to, his own personal sense of justice. Not taking justice from, like, absolutes or, you know, like what the Marines kind of hand down or whatever. He has to come to terms with his own personal sense of, a sense of justice. And I think that's what, you know, Blackbeard was kind of saying the same thing, and I think that really resonated with Kuzan. And he started to really think, like, yeah, like, everybody at the end of the day kind of has their own sense of justice, you know what I mean? It's, it, it might not, it's like, yeah, I, I guess it could tend more toward absolute and moral. But that was sort of the dichotomy that was presented in One Piece. You can either have absolute justice, and then all the different types that are under that, like Akainu subscribes to thorough justice, which is a subset of absolute. Or you can have moral justice, which is like certain justices, like his lazy justice, subscribe to that. Maybe there's more than the dichotomy. Maybe it's, maybe Kuzan is just like, why are we looking at this from the lens of like this or this? Maybe there's like a bunch of different kinds of justice, a bunch of different things that are lined up here. And he's trying to find his own sense of it. He's, he's kind of, he's making a journey. Journey, a journey of self-discovery. That's what Kuzan is on right now, okay? And it's like, you could look at it maybe as a little bit of like a midlife crisis because Kuzan's like 50. But also remember, he was in the Marines for 30 years, okay? And we don't know the whole thing about Kuzan's backstory. We don't know why he decided to join the Marines. Although, I will mention, and I think this was also said in Film Z, Kuzan, when he joined the Marines, it was mentioned that he didn't really care very much about the world government prior to joining the Marines. Like, he had some issues with the way the world government things even before he became a Marine. Um, it might have been a situation where Kuzan maybe grew up in poverty. Maybe he grew up on an island that um, it was allied with the world government, but kind of a situation like Lelusia, where Lelusia was allied and King Seki went to reverie and everything, but King Seki was horribly cruel to his uh, citizens of Lelusia. And a lot of other kingdoms are like that, too. So maybe Kuzan grew up in a situation like that where it's like, hey, we're supposed to be under the protection of the world government. The Marines are blah, 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 supposed to be helping us. And, um, you know, I'm still living in poverty, and it's like a really rough, like, kind of lifestyle. Maybe Kuzan's parents died, you know, raising him, and he had to live as, like, an orphan on the streets or something like that. So eventually he did end up joining the Marines. Maybe it's like that was the only option, honestly. Maybe it was one of those situations where, like, okay, the world government's not that great, but the pirates are obviously worse because the pirates were actively attacking, you know, his island or something. So Kuzan did end up joining the Marines and being taught by Zephyr and then by Garp and uh, eventually rose to the rank of Marines. So for most of his life, though, he was really just there taking orders. And now he has to kind of adjust to that, right? So is Kuzan going to go save that passenger ship? Is it not a passenger ship? It is a Marine ship, but it has citizens on it, it as civilians, it has slaves. Uh, you also wonder that those people, those slaves that were captured were on Hachinosu and they were imprisoned there. 
So why didn't Kuzan save them prior to that? You could say, he's like, well, if he didn't save them earlier when they were on the island, he's definitely not going to save them now. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't know about that. I mean, it might have been a situation where Kuzan was like, well, yeah, this is kind of messed up. They are pirates. Uh, you know, uh, maybe as long as Blackbeard doesn't kill these innocent civilians, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know, really know where it would go. Because um, Kuzan, I still feel like he's he's definitely moral to the point where he doesn't want to say he doesn't want to see innocent civilians be murdered. Okay, and uh, I, I guess it was one thing for Kuzan to like, ah, they're locked up in a cell down there. Like Kobe was locked up. I, I guess. We're, we're not torturing them or anything, uh, and I don't know. It's a kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about this. But now, it's like literally the cards are on the table. The ship is sailing away, and here comes the giant fist. Here comes Avala Pizarro, literally about to just crush the whole damn ship, killing everybody on board, okay? Marines and civilians alike, okay? And Kobe mentioned this, and so it's like, okay... I think Aokiji is going to save that ship because Aokiji, like, despite anything else in his life, he's like, I don't want to be like a Kainu. I don't want to be like a Kainu and just allow this to happen. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't, I couldn't stop it when I was at Ohara. Or rather, here's another thing. Kuzan could have maybe stopped it when he was at Ohara. He just didn't, you know? You, you look about that scene and it's like, maybe if Kuzan would have... You know, I don't I don't know because like it's a thing where like what was Kuzan doing? Kuzan was on the island at that time. Yeah, I guess he couldn't have stopped it because he was on the island with Saul and then the whole thing, then the, the, the passenger ship blew up. So he wasn't there like next to Sakazuki. I, I, I guess Kuzan didn't have an opportunity to stop it. But he still probably feels guilt over it because Sakazuki was like, you know, he's a Marine. He was a vice admiral at the time, same as Kuzan. So he's like, oh man, I, I don't want that to ever happen again. And it might be even a situation where Kuzan maybe doesn't try to think about it all that often. Um, you know, when the Blackbeard Pirates brought up the red poneglyphs and they brought up the, you know, the road poneglyphs to Kuzan talking about the man with the burn scar, you know, the flame scar and everything like that. Kuzan mentions like, oh, uh, Ohara is full of nothing but horrible memories for me. I, I really try not to think about it too much because it's just, it's hard, you know? Um, and so maybe, yeah, Kuzan just kind of, kind of kept pushing that in the back of his mind, but now he doesn't have a choice but to think about it because now as the giant fist comes down about to crush this ship with innocent civilians, that Kuzan knows is on there, he's going to be like, all right, Teach isn't going to like this very much, and, and Teach kind of gave me a, maybe a little bit of a new lease on life to kind of make me realize who I really am as a person. And uh, Kuzan might finally come to realization of who he really is. And he might be like, okay, you know what? I am a man of the people. You know, I don't want to fight for the Marines. I don't want to fight for pirates. I'm a man of the people. Why do I have to join a faction here? You know what I mean? And so maybe Kuzan jumps out and he freezes Avala Pizarro and he helps the, the ship get away, Garp's ship uh, escape. And then Avala Pizarro's frozen and then all the other Blackbeard pirates are like, Kuzan, what are you doing? You freaking traitor. You're once a traitor, always a traitor. And Kuzan lands on the island and he's just like, you know what? I'm not joining any faction. You might even say at this point, if you say you're of the people, you might say, well, maybe Kuzan's going to join the revolutionaries. Maybe Kuzan doesn't even want to join the revolutionaries. Maybe he's just like, you know what? I just want to be someone that wanders the world and just saves people wherever I can. You know, Kuzan becomes like a superhero, kind of. He's just like, you know what? I'm not part of anything. I don't want to join anything. Uh, I'm just going to travel the world with my penguin. And I'm gonna, yeah, well, by the way, where is Camel? We didn't see the super penguin Camel anywhere in the last couple of chapters. I want to see Camel. I'm going to see him around, okay? I'm just going to travel the world with my penguin, and I'm going to save as many people as I can. It doesn't matter who's hurting them. I don't care. World government, pirates, marines, corrupt marines, whatever. I'm going to go and just save as many people as I can. And that's, that's my sense of justice. That's not, it's not blazing justice. It's not uh, uh, lazy justice. It's my justice. It's Kuzan's justice. That's the kind of justice I want to subscribe to right uh even if it means making enemies along the way so it might be a situation where he freezes a Pizarro, the ship leaves um the blackbeard crew turns on him and uh kuzan just leaves it might just be a thing where kuzan leaves i don't want to kill garp you know what garp i don't want to kill you you know you you were my mentor i do think of you fondly um 
I still disagree with the Marines and the way it's run. I disagree with the world government, so I don't want to I'm not joining the Marines again. Uh, so he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it here at this, and then he leaves, okay? And then Garp gets up, and then Garp manages to, like, if Avala Pizarro's frozen, and Vasco's taken care of, and San Juan's taken care of, and if Shiryu is, is maybe pounded into the ground a bit, or maybe Aokiji can freeze him too, and just be like, you know what? Let bygones be bygones. For old times' sake, Garp, I'll let you get away. I'm not going with you, though. I'm going off and doing my own thing, right? So there's that, because I really don't see a scenario where Kuzan just straight up murders Garp. I just don't see him wanting to do that, okay? Um, you know, I, I think he was there fighting for Blackbeard because he felt like it, it might be a thing. It really might be a thing here where Kuzan realizes that he's just doing the same thing he did with the Marines, but with Blackbeard, where he joined the Marines maybe out of some sense of loyalty. Maybe he looked up to Garp, and that's why he joined the Marines, because he did have admiration toward him. He's like, I'm going to join the Marines, and I'm going to be trained by Garp, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow that sense of justice, okay? And then he did that, and it's like, all right, that didn't work. And so he left, and he was kind of, like, depressed a little bit, and then Blackbeard shows up. Blackbeard might be, like, Kuzan's rebound. <laughs> Blackbeard might be like, oh, okay, you know what? He's giving me a new lease on life. He's telling me to live my life the way I want to. On his crew. Where he captures people. And murders people. Like a lot of people. To the point where Avala Pizarro was about to murder a bunch of innocent civilians. You know what? I'm doing the whole thing all over again. Damn it. Kuzan's like, it's just the same thing except with Blackbeard. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. You know? Honestly, I think that would be great. And then, you know, Kuzan could still show up. He's just like a wandering... He's like Batman, kind of. You know, he's just a wandering vigilante out there in the new world, you know? Not really listening to anybody's particular... He's not part of any faction, okay? And then you could still have him, like, show up at the final war or something like that. We have a final war going on, and Kuzan just rolls up to it. And just like, I'm not fighting for anybody but myself. Let's go. And maybe he'll have another encounter with Sakazuki. We'll see how that rolls out. Maybe he'll have another encounter with Blackbeard. Who knows? But that would really open up a lot of possibilities there. It really would. Um, and it makes the most sense. Because I really don't see Kuzan, somebody that has purportedly a moral sense of justice like, working for Blackbeard seriously. You know, I could see him as like, you know what, I'll try working on a pirate crew. Maybe they're not as always bad as the Marines made them seem to be. And that's true. Like, the Straw Hats are definitely a good pirate crew. Uh, I mean, like, they're good pirates, but also they are morally good pirates, right? Um, but in the case with Blackbeard, I mean... A lot of murder. A lot of murder. Like, Katarina Davon, her backstory is she is a serial killer that goes around and beheads every woman that she finds more beautiful than her. I don't see how Kuzan could justify, like, I'm working on a crew with her. You know, he's, he's had a rough spot in his life, a journey of self-discovery, and this is a journey he's had to make multiple times in his life. This is not just one time he's doing this. So he doesn't really know where he's at right now, and he's like, all right, tried the Marines, that didn't work, let's try this pirate crew, and uh, they're really, they're, they, they were trying to spin this thing where it's like their own sense of justice, and it's like kind of like they're, no, this is just messed up, you know, what they're kind of doing, so uh, no, 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 and that's, I think that's the best way for Kuzan to really resolve this, but how do you think it's going to end? How do you think this is going to go down? I think Kuzan's going to save the ship, I think he's going to get involved with that, and then um, after that, it's kind of up in the air what the decision will be beyond that, um, because if he does save the ship, Blackbeard's crew is not going to trust him anymore. They are going to turn on him 100%, okay? Um, you know, the Titanic captains are there. They're going to witness that, and they're going to relay that information to Teach when he gets back. I don't think Teach is going to be okay with that. I don't think, well, Kobe escaped, and Avala Pizarro was about to kill them all, and then you, uh, you saved them. That's not cool. You know, that's, that's not, that's going against my orders and stuff. You know, it's like, Aokiji's like, well, I thought you said to live us by our own lives. You said to be the kind of person I want to be. He's like, yeah, but you're still on my crew. Yeah, this is how it is, right? Okay. Anyway, let me know how you feel about Aokiji and uh, where his character is going later in the story. Because I think out of all of the admirals, um, Oda's favorite at the moment is definitely Aokiji. So we'll, we'll see where this rolls. Uh, don't have any whale facts for you today. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't write anything down. But remember, Teco next week or this week coming up um, Friday, 21st, 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Panel 2, I believe it is. But you can just look at the schedule. I'll have a link below in the description for all the Teco stuff if you want to get tickets. Uh, hope to see you there. Techie101 signing out. Going, 
Going back to sleep. Gonna hit some Z's right here. Yes. Oh, yes. Ugh.